Hello, um, I'm Saiful Islam. I'm the principal investigator of the CATMAT project on next generation lithium ion cathode materials. And uh, just want to give you a, a general overview of the progress and scientific highlights of, the, um, of this project. Why cathode materials? Um, I think it's well established that one of the greatest barriers to next generation lithium ion batteries with high energy density is the cathode chemistry. Obviously, there are the components within the battery cell. There needs to be advances in anodes, but one of the greatest barriers is the cathode. And a major challenge is to do with the energy density. Um, and this directly relates to longer uh, range for electric vehicles. So the current capacity of the cathode is around 220 milliamp hours per gram. Can we go beyond 300? And that's the, one of the challenges in terms of energy density. So to, to meet that challenge, we've developed an integrated program. Um, and they, that integration involves three work packages. Um, the first one is to do with understanding um, high energy density cathodes. And this relates to nickel rich materials that are already out there, nickel rich NMC, and also auction redox materials. The second work package is to do with discovery. Can we discover new materials and synthesize them? Um, and that's um, led by Peter Slater at Birmingham. The third um, work package is with those promising materials that we've discovered with um, advanced properties, can we scale them up and test them within the lab? Um, so that's C to really to evaluate their performance. And ultimately, the goal is can we develop new cathodes uh, for commercial applications? And at the bottom of that slide is the, um, the website and the Twitter account if you want further details. So the team we've assembled is um, well-established battery researchers, um, as well as um, rising early career stars that bring new capabilities to the project. So um, some of the techniques we've, we've got in the team are electrochemistry, spectroscopy, and translation of materials to devices. That's Peter Bruce, Claire Gray, Emma Kendrick, and Lawrence Hardwick. We also have expertise in materials modeling, materials discovery and synthesis. Uh, that's myself, Ben Morgan, who's the project leader at Bath, Peter Slater at Birmingham, Matt Rosinski at Liverpool. Um, and also um, techniques, new techniques. This could be in situ and operando spectroscopy, microscopy and imaging. Phoebe Allen um, at Birmingham, John Claridge, Liverpool, Rod Jervis at UCL, Pete Nellis at Oxford, Paul Shearing at UCL, and Paul Quinn at the Diamond Light Source. The team obviously involves the researchers on the ground, and we have 18 postdocs, eight PhD students, and over the summer, we hosted five FUSE interns. And it's um, on the admin side, we have um, Adrian Pugh as program manager and Lou Mudge as uh, project administrator. So some, to, some of the scientific highlights. So case study one, we've got three case studies I wanted to highlight. The first one relates to understanding lithium rich oxide cathodes. So currently um, the NMC, which is the nickel manganese cobalt um, um, cathodes, which probably dominate EVs, have a capacity in the range of 170 to 220 milliamp hours per gram. And the projected target for these lithium rich layered materials is greater than 300. So these are seen as near term potential candidates, but there are major problems. And the major problems, and this is one of the compositions that we've been looking at, this lithium rich NMC, the major problem is the severe voltage hysteresis on the first cycle, which is illustrated by that load curve there. So that voltage drop also really relates to a decrease in energy density. It's related to the honeycomb structure, structure shown on the right, and that shows the transition metal layer and the honeycomb arrangement. So can we understand 
that voltage hysteresis. So this is very recent work coming out of Oxford and three of the postdocs on this project. And they showed that that voltage hysteresis is associated with molecular O2 trapped inside the cathode, which is actually reduced back to O2 minus on discharge. And this is revealed by high resolution spectroscopy, both um, resonant inelastic X-ray scattering and oxygen NMR, which is shown on the right. The, uh, the RICS data is shown on the, on the right, which shows a signature for molecular O2. So what's the implication? Well, if you can rearrange the structure to a, um, a ribbon arrangement, an ordered ribbon arrangement, that hysteresis is su suppressed, shown by the voltage, um, um, the load curve there. You can see a severe reduction in the voltage drop and hence the higher energy density is maintained. And this relates to the structure on the right a ribbon arrangement in that transition metal layer. So this is a strategy for trying to reduce that um, hysteresis and try and maintain that high energy density by a, a structural rearrangement. And this was published in Nature Energy over the summer. So it's quite a high profile success um, uh, in terms of understanding um, these lithium rich voltage, um, these lithium rich cathode materials. And as I mentioned, these are postdocs within the um, CAPMAP project, Rob House, um, Greg Reese, and Miguel Perez Osorio within the, um, the group of Peter Bruce. The second case study is to do with new materials. And these materials are disordered rock salts. There's a growing interest in these materials because of their high energy density. And one of the prototype materials is this new oxyfluoride, lithium manganese oxyfluoride, which is both cobalt and nickel free. The structure is shown on the top right. That is a typical rock salt structure. But in this case, we have a mixed cation site and a mixed anion site. So why are they of interest? They've got a high capacity and a lower voltage hysteresis than the ordered lithium rich layered up cathodes, which is shown on the plot at the bottom right. The pink is the lithium rich layered. The blue is this um, disordered rock salt showing a lower hysteresis. But why is that? So the precise redox chemistry and possible oxygen evolution are not well understood, not fully understood. So recent work, which is now um, in press within JAX, we've shown using computational and experimental techniques that on charging, on charging, we have the formation of molecular O2 trapped inside a nano sized cavity shown in the figure on the top left. And this is revealed by high resolution RICS data. Um, I've shown you three uh, plots. The bottom is the pristine, the middle is the charged, showing the O2 and, and on discharge, you're losing the O2. It's reverting back to O2 minus. What's also interesting is that we've done the first ab initio molecular dynamics showing that that trapped O2 shows limited O2 motion. It's actually trapped. It's not moving around very much. So the plot shows in green um, the mean square displacement for the trapped O2 in black is the mean, square, mean square displacement for free gaseous O2 in the same type of nano sized volume shown significant diffusion. So what we're finding from our structural analysis is that there's no major structural rearrangement and a much lower hysteresis for these um, disordered rock salt. So these insights have given us a clue. Basically, we've got some more structurally stable oxygen redox cathodes because of the intrinsic disorder of these rock salt materials. And we're going further with these new materials. So let me introduce um, um, the final case study. And this relates to work package three and the material scale up 
and cell testing. And I want to introduce Professor Emma Kendrick from the University of Birmingham. Thanks, Thanks Eiffel. Um, so in this work package, what we're doing is trying to understand how the cathode materials interact with the other cell components and how we can um, go to the next stage of stabilization of the cathodes in a full cell configuration. And so what we've started to do is to develop scale-up methods for uh, the next generation of NMCs. And in this case, it's a nine half half material. And we've managed to produce uh, via co-precipitation methods, uh, precursor hydroxides, which are then mixed with a lithium source milled and then by controlling the lithium source of firing temperature the atmosphere and the regime for the firing temperature we can actually optimize our nine half half materials in terms of morphology and also performance um, and from these materials we can then start to look at surface properties and surface interactions to try and stabilize the surfaces within our cell configurations um, and look at um, potential surface coatings as well for further stabilization. Can you move on to the next slide, please, Saifel? Thank you. Um, and so it's been quite an interesting um, few months in the project, and we've managed to develop a scale-up route already to produce some pure nine-half-half material. And it's very interesting to show that even though you have pure material, actually the structure and the arrangements of the cations have an extreme um, influence upon the performance properties of your material. So if you look at the XRD plots on the top right hand side, you can see the same material with the same composition just fired under two different firing regimes. Um, the main thing that you can notice um, from the XRD patterns is there's a different ratio of the intensity of the peaks and one thing we can do is look at the ratio of the 01 which is the 18 degree peak and the 104 peak which is about 45 degrees if the 01 peak which is due to the c-axis is larger than the 104 peak we know that we've got um, less nickel lithium mixing in our system and you can see that this actually influences the performance of our materials quite significantly. So looking at the electrochemistry at the bottom, we have the two firing regimes, A and B. And on the left-hand side, we, we have the A regime. Uh, we have large hysteresis, uh, and we're only reaching about 100 uh, milliamp hours per gram. Bear in mind, this is exactly the same material. And then with our firing regime two, we're now reaching in excess of 200 milliamp hours per gram. Um, with the same material with this nine half half. Uh, the other thing to note from this is actually the reproducibility of the methods that we've been developing. And you can see that in both the A and B regimes, the number of cells that we've tested, um, four in one case and two in the other, uh, actually overlay directly on top of each other. And this is because we've put an awful lot of work in to try and develop our processes for handling and also then uh, transferring this into electrode and into a cell to make sure that we've got reproducibility. Uh, can you move on to the next slide, please, I thought. Thank you. Uh, and so moving on to what next, we need to understand how we can stabilize, stabilize um, high voltage cathodes and utilizing a material that we understand such as the NMC 9 half half, we can now start to look at the interface and the interface formations um, over time, either with the electrolyte uh, degradation on the surface or electrolyte additives going into the cells, um, and also looking at secondary coatings of the particles as well. Um, I wanted to um, signpost very briefly um, some other conference presentations of, of the CatMap project. Uh, they're listed there. I won't list all their names and also posters. So talks and posters are being presented within this um, Farad Institution conference uh, by our CatMat researchers. So let me conclude. Um, an obvious question would be, what does project success look like? What does success look like? I suppose there are three strands that you could say. One is we've new insights have been gained on high energy density cathodes. The other success would be 
we've discovered we would discover new materials with um, high performance properties. Those new materials would have been scaled up and tested uh, within battery cells. And then ultimately, we've developed uh, new cathodes or new cathode materials with potential commercial applications. Um, if you'd like some further information or further details, our website is listed at the bottom and our Twitter account as well. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you.